This use of play is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello This is your Bobby This Today Evening Update for Friday, August 14. I'm Frenella Wedderburn, so glad you can join us. In another two months, inmates at Her Majesty's Prison Dodds will not have to travel to courts in Bridgetown for bail hearings. That's because authorities will be utilizing new technology at the Supreme Court, which will allow video conferencing from the St. Philip Prison. Word of this today from Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson as he officially officially launched the U.S.-U.K. funded video prison conferencing project. So any judge can come in, uh, sit here, and, um, and hear the, the, the application. We have, have the Crown. If the Crown is here, the Crown will be, will be, will be present. If the defense attorney is here, the defense attorney will be present. Uh, but the, the fact is that the applicant will be at Dodds and we won't need to have that applicant brought down brought down here. And so so we hope that we we will help you it'll help you reduce the the situation which, which I saw when I visited Dodds where I saw saw some of the guys working on on the buses and they were actually scavenging scavenging parts from an old bus to keep up to keep the new bus running. You know, um, and that's because you've got to transport people down here for, for, for five minutes here. The Chief Justice added that the move will yield significant savings in several areas, including transportation. He also explained that it could benefit vulnerable individuals involved in special cases. This courtroom can be linked to a trial courtroom. I needed to trial courtrooms on the first floor. If you have a vulnerable witness who, for one reason or other, um, has fear of being in the same place as a defendant, you know, like, um, yeah. child, child uh, witness, um, gang situation where you've got a, a gang, a gang witness, um, domestic violence, um, you can you can use this as a sanitizing environment in which you place the witness. And the witness can be sitting right there and, and his or her image projected right down to the courtroom. So that again, they will be virtually in the courtroom and the courtroom will be virtually here, but the two are not physically, physically in each other's presence. In other news this Friday, Barbados's overall performance in this year's Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination gets the thumbs up. Speaking at the official Release of the CXC results at its Pine St. Michael headquarters this morning. Senior Assistant Registrar of the Caribbean Examination Council, Dr. Charles Mienga, said Barbados compared well with the region in the CAPE exams. Dr. Mienga also reported that this country attained 90% in 39 of the 56 units and another 75% in 46 of 56 units. The results also showed that Barbados performed better than the region in 29 out of 56 units. However, Education Minister Ronald Jones still has some concerns. We continue to be strong in several areas, but in some areas that we must look at, um, and strive at youth and sociology and that drop, but it's across the region, so something has to be looked at there. Um, I want to see more participation in agricultural science, history, social studies. You can see that we're pretty strong in those who enter in the, in the science areas. Um, that, that is, that is pretty, pretty strong. Um, we need to spend a little more attention on IT. A turning point in the health of the nation. That's how Director of the Chronic Disease Research Center, 
Professor Clive Landis is describing the just-released Barbados Health of the Nation survey. The core findings of the report show that Barbados is battling a high rate of non-communicable diseases, especially diabetes, hypertension, and high cholesterol. Professor Landis says the survey is a vital tool to help authorities find new ways to reverse the negative trends. He cited the proposed tax on sweet drinks as a step in the right direction. We will not only be providing uh, information on uh, what risk factors exist in our population and what the rate of diabetes is and, um, and hypertension, but we will also be letting the public know when these policies are introduced, whether they work. So the sugar sweetened beverage tax um, is the latest kid on the block and a lot of people uh, would have their own thoughts on it. And it's important to know that the health of the nation actually has a um, component in it where we already know the um, consumption habits of the public for sugar sweetened beverages. Mm. So when this new tax comes in, we'll be able to let you know if it actually had the desired effect. It may not, but it may do. Meantime, Health Minister John Boyce is urging residents to do their part in reducing high incidence of NCDs in the country. While government will be aggressively pursuing policy options and programs, it would be incomplete if I do not implore every citizen to take seriously the picture of ourselves that has been presented in the Health of Our Nation study today. Take this opportunity to begin to make necessary lifestyle changes. If you need to exercise more to lose weight, just do it. If you need to change the way you eat, use less sugar, salt, and fat, and if you need to take an alcohol beverage, do so with extreme moderation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. To the region now, Bahamian police have arrested a man who posted a troubling photographs of a baby on social media. One image captioned, Daddy buy me a new toy, showed the baby with a gun and in the second, the baby had a package of what appeared to be marijuana. Both pictures were making the rounds on Facebook and WhatsApp, prompting, prompting police to mount a search for those responsible. In a separate incident, a woman seen in the pictures with a high-powered assault firearm was also arrested. Police have warned social media users who break the law that they will be tracked down and dealt with according to the law. On the international front, Eurozone finance ministers have agreed on a new bailout deal for Greece. The European Commission President said the deal sends a clear message that Greece will remain in the Eurozone. The agreement demands tax hikes and more tough spending cuts. New loans of up to $95 billion will be made available over the next three years.
Of course, we welcomed the agreement that was reached between the institutions and Greece on the policy conditionality. It is, to our mind, uh, in line with the key objectives set by the Euro Summit on the 12th of July. Uh, and if implemented with determination, of course, it always boils down to determination, uh, it will allow the Greek economy to return to sustainable growth. Secondly, we um, commended the Greek authorities uh, on their strong commitment shown uh, over the last weeks by the normalization of the working methods with the institutions. I think that was very helpful to have a good and fruitful uh, process. Uh, and also, we've seen important and determined uh, legis legislative steps over the past weeks and days even in uh, Greece, and that has helped in the process of rebuilding trust. But it comes at a heavy political price for the Greek Prime Minister, who has faced a rebellion in his own party. More than 40 MPs voted against him when Parliament decided on the bailout agreement. And that's the news. For more, log on to www.barbidestoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 Online TV and a mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Have a fantastic weekend and be sure to join us again on Monday.